Hey, this is Julian, and you are on Eat the Blocks. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use React hooks and context in your decentralized application. So React hooks and context were introduced in a recent version of React, and with them, you can really simplify the code in your React application. However, most of the tutorial to build Ethereum dApps are with old version of React. So it's really important that you start using the new version of React, and I'm gonna show you this in, in this tutorial. All right, so without any much further ado, let's get started. So I'm gonna to go to my terminal, and I'm gonna start a dApp project with React. And to do this quickly, I'm gonna use the truffle unbox command, and I'm gonna choose the React box. So if you don't know what is truffle, check out my other tutorial on truffle, link in the description. And if you don't know what is a truffle box, then check out the second video of this series. All right, so let's use the truffle box of React. So truffle unbox React. And it's going to set up the project for my smart contract and also the front end with React. And the two will already be integrated. All right, so everything has been installed. So I can see my folder layout here. And inside the contracts folder, there is already a smart contract that we can use, simple storage. So that's a very simple smart contract with an integer variable. So we can change the value of this variable and we can get the value of these variables. Super simple. And all the front end is inside the client directory. So actually, I'm going to create several terminals. I'm going to use Tmax, but you don't have to. You can use whatever you want, right? And in one of my terminal, I'm going to go to the front end, okay? And here, we're going to have a look at package.json. So here, I can see that for the version of React, it's above 16.8. So that's fine because React hooks were introduced in React 16.8. So let's install everything with npm install. So npm install. Oops, the n is clicked on my screen. All right. So I'm going to open app.js inside the src directory. So the app component is our main component. So that's where we connect to the blockchain with Web3 and it's where we build a Web3 contract instance so that we can interact with our simple storage spot contract. So I've already explained how this works in the previous video of this series. So go watch it if you're not sure how this all fits together. But the point of this video is to use hooks instead of the old API of React. So we're gonna do this. So here we have a class-based component and I wanna use hooks instead. So the first step is to define a function because there is no class with a new React API. And we need to define our state. So here in our app component, we have a state with different things. So storage value, that's the value of a variable inside our smart contract, a Web3 instance, the list of all the accounts we have, and a Web3 contract instance. So we're gonna use the useState function of React to create our state. So here, let's remove components, we don't need it, but we're gonna import useState from React. So for each element of our state, we're going to define two variable. So the first one is the value of our state. And the second one is a function to change the value of our state storage value. And this is given by use state and the initial value. We pass it like this undefined. All right. Actually, let's make this full screen. Okay, it's more clear. So I'm going to do the same with Web3 accounts and contract. All right, all our state is defined. So now we need to implement the component deadman function that we have in our old component. So with React hooks, you don't have component in man anymore, but you have a special hook that is called use effect that can give you a similar functionality. So first we're gonna import it, use effect from React. 
and then we're going to use it so you call use effect you give it a callback so in the callback we're going to copy paste what we have in component in mount use effect takes a second argument so that's an array of a variable to watch so for example if i want to execute what is inside use effect every time that accounts changes then i put accounts here and you can add other variable as well if you want to watch other variable but if we want to accomplish the same functionality as component did man which is we want to execute the code just once when the component first mount then in this case you pass an empty array to use effect here and you can have several use effect in your component so with uh, different things in your array here so this one maybe that you actually want to watch accounts etc etc all right so we're gonna copy paste the code of component did demand but we have a problem because in our code here we use async await so that would force us to have an async callback like this but if you do this react hooks is going to complain you can do this with hook you can have an async callback however what you can do is define an async function inside and you can execute this function so let's do this so we're going to define a function and then we're going to call this init function right away okay so let's copy paste the code of component did mount all right so we're gonna get web3 get all the accounts then build our contract instance however here instead of set state we're not going to do like this because there is no set state with react hook so instead we're going to use the function that we defined before to update the state so for example we have a set web3 web3 then we do the same for the other one so set accounts set contract all right so if you don't remember where we define this function that just right here when we define our state every time we define the value and a function to modify this value and this is provided by this function use state okay and there is a last thing that we need to do this is the initialization code so in this run example so how can we do this with hook we want to wait that all our state is populated so how to do this well actually we can use another use effect hook and we can tell it to watch for all the variables that we need inside so we're gonna watch web3 accounts and contract and if we have these three variables so type of web3 is not undefined same thing for all the other variable basically then we're gonna execute a function then we define our function above Okay, let's scroll down to see what we have in this run example function so let, let's copy paste this all right so we're going to change a few things so accounts and contract we don't have to take this from this uh, this state that just exists as normal variable so yeah we can directly call contract methods and call the set function and access the accounts variable here yeah this is fine too and for the set state however we're gonna do it like this so set storage value and we pass the response so again set storage value was defined when we define our state above let's just have a quick look to remind ourselves how we did it here storage value set storage value that was given by use state all right so let's scroll down so this part is done so we can 
get rid of the state here in the app component component did man also is this done run example also. and the last part is to render the html but first we check if web3 is loaded if that is not the case then we show a loading message so we're going to do the same thing so if type of web3 is undefined Then we're going to return this otherwise we're going to return what we have here all right so let's see if everything is fine so all this static HTML this is fine but here the store value is this storage value so this is not going to work so we remove this state dot storage value all right yeah and now we should be good so let me save this and we're going to deploy our smart contract and run the front end and check out what we see so truffle develop it's going to start a local development blockchain all right so now let's deploy our smart contract cool now let's deploy the front end so i go inside the client directory and i run npm start all right so we have an error in the javascript file so let's fix this okay yep oh and actually i realized there is an other error so here we need to call this variable contract because that's what we save here for our contract instance oh and we also need to modify something in src get web3 because what truffle react box give us is a connection to ganache which is running at 8545 but when you run truffle develop it's actually 9545 so let me fix this and when you load the front end you should see this yeah it's working okay so now you know the basic of using react hooks in your decentralized application but there, there is still something else that i'd like to show you and that is react context so let's understand the problem that it solved so let's say that you have a hierarchy of deeply nested components and you want to pass some data to one of the child component that means that you need to pass this data as a prop to all the intermediary components and that can be a little bit cumbersome so with react context you have a sort of a global object in which you can put whatever things you need to share across different components and you can access this context from any component in your application you don't need to pass any props so how this work so for that, let's come back to our code. So I'm going to make it bigger. And inside the SRC directory, I'm going to create a new file called blockchain context.js. Then I'm going to define my context inside. So I import React and I'm going to export a context like this. So export default react.create context. And I can give it an initial value. So I want undefined when we start okay and then in my parent component so the one at the top of your hierarchy I want to import this context so import blockchain context from blockchain context and I'm going to wrap all my HTML element by a provider of this context. So I can do it like this. So blockchain context dot provider. So this dot provider thing is provided by React. I don't need to do anything. The only thing I need to do is to pass it a value. And so that's the moment when you're going to put stuff inside your context. So probably that you want to put Web3 and then the accounts and then the contract all right so let me indent everything here and let me close this component blockchain context dot provider all right and now in a let's say that i have a child component here so child 
component and inside this child component I want to use this blockchain context so how do I do it well let me define this child component so child component dot js and I'm going to import react as usual export default child component so that's gonna be a function so first you want to import your context in the child component that you use it then you're going to import a hook from react that is called use context and then inside your component here you're going to import the context like this so you use use context hook of react and you pass it your context blockchain context and now inside this blockchain context then you can access everything that you put inside the context so you'll have so you can extract web3 contract and accounts from this so that's super convenient and super easy and you can define as many contexts as you want by the way, if you want to become a blockchain developer and learn how you can get your first blockchain job, I've prepared a free training with all the secrets of how I did it myself. So go to this address to register for this free training. All right, we covered pretty much everything on the topic of how to build an Ethereum decentralized application with React hooks and context. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comments down below. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can use React hooks and context with Drizzle, which is a front-end framework to easily build decentralized application. Thanks for watching and see you for the next video.